always going to be there for us. Amen. So let's not forget God. Let's not forget all the good things He's done for us. Amen. You know, people that forget God and get out of church, not only do, do they forget about the covenant, but they also forget about the works that He's done. You know, what great works God has done. We look at the Bible and all the wonderful miracles that He's performed. Has God ever, let me ask you a question, has God ever performed a miracle in your life? Amen. Amen. We all need to raise our hand because when He saved Thank you, you Lord. that was the greatest miracle of all. Amen. It's the greatest miracle. It ain't the miracle that Jesus appears on a, uh, a piece of bread, you know, or that a statue of Mary's crying somewhere. I don't know that that's a miracle. Some people say that is. But the greatest miracle I've ever known, Brother Tim Smith, is when he saved me. That's Amen. the greatest miracle. Uh, yes, sir, Brother. You're exactly right, Brother Tim Smith. Let's turn over to 2 Kings 17 and 38. 2 Kings 17 and 38. 2 Kings 17 and 38. You know, in breaking that covenant, we realized in Deuteronomy that when we forget God, we replace Him with other things. We start setting up uh, that idol. And He doesn't like idolatry. He doesn't like when you replace Him with things. Let's look here in 2 Kings 17 and 38. When you get there, please say amen. amen. And the, the Bible says here, In the covenant that I have made with you, you shall not forget, neither shall you fear other gods. It's talking about the covenant here once again. And the covenant that I have made with you, you shall not forget. Neither shall you fear other gods. You know, there's a time of calamity in our country right now. Is the Islamic movement is big in America. Now you can, you know, I'm not real big on conspiracy theories because they'll probably rack your brain if you get on it. Brother Tim Smith, Brother Tim, you know, Illuminati, uh, all these things, you know, that... They want to take and they want to depopulate the earth down to about 500 million people, so they want to do a lot of genocide. So that's conspiracy theory. But what I'm looking at is a, an enemy in our presence, and that's the Islamic movement. They're building mosques in New York City near Ground Zero. And I don't understand a president that would allow that to happen. Right. Uh, that's good. Those are sworn enemies of the Christian people. That's the sworn enemies of Jesus Christ. And we've got to be very careful. Uh, you know, we've got to pray for our country. We've got to get on track. Not only do we pray for ourselves and, and our church and our loved ones and everything, but you know what? These other gods that are coming into our country, I don't fear them. I don't fear these little gods. These little G's, I don't fear them. I don't care what they say. Kamash, Dagon, they never withstood God Amen. in the Old Testament, did they? Dagon, he ended up on his face. And then he ended up with his palms cut off, didn't he? Right. Remember that when they said the Philistines had uh, taken the ark and they put it in the temple of Dagon. Remember that story in the Old Testament? And he was found on his face, and then they put him up right. You see, they had to pick that little god up, didn't they? He couldn't pick himself up, so they picked him up, put him back up there, and then went in the next day. You know, the palms of his hands were cut off. You know, those little gods, they'll never, ever uh, change my perspective on serving the only true living God. Amen. You know, and that's the main thing. Folks, don't fear what's about to happen here in America because some, probably some horrible things are going to happen that we've never seen before. Amen. You know, right now that uh, there's American soldiers in Poland, they put them down, boots on the ground, and they're right near the Ukraine crisis, and Russia is building up in the Ukraine, and you know, this might be the, the very edge of World War III. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I do know who holds tomorrow. Amen. You know, if we look at, uh, if we look at the geographical uh, perspective of things, we know that there's always going to be wars and rumors of wars, and Russia's not going to back down. But you know what? At least uh, I'm grateful that we have a president that does uh, mind to put us as a presence in Europe. You know, I'm grateful for that, but to what degree it'll be, I don't know. What I'm saying is this. We don't need to fear what's going to happen tomorrow because God has everything in control. I used to think, how in the world did Obama get into the White House? But God, exactly. he, was, he was in control the whole time. He knew exactly who was going to win the election, so I don't need to wrap my brain over those things. We're looking at works. People forget about that covenant, and they forget about works. Let's turn our Bibles over to Psalm 78 and 7. Psalms 78 and 7. We're talking about breaking covenants. Don't break that covenant that God has made with us. Amen. Psalms 78 and 7. Breaking covenants and also forgetting His works. Are you there? 78 and 7. Amen. Brother Tim Smith, would you, when you get there, would you please read that scripture for us, sir? That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God but keep His commandments. Amen. 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 That they might set their hope in who? God. 
in God. And not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. When I got saved, I started reading my Bible. And there was a purpose in reading this Bible. Because every generation has its generations of teachers and preachers. And they've got to teach that next generation coming up. You Philip, good? you may have four preachers coming up. You know what? You know, you never know who's going to be that next called of God. Brother Tim, we've got to be ready. We've got to be prepared. And I started reading the Word of God. I didn't realize what ministry God would place me in. I, I knew it was going to be music because that's something I had before I was saved. And, I, and God can use those things for His glory. But I started reading the Bible. And I started seeing all the wonderful works of God. And it amazed me, this, this wonderful Beautiful book, uh, the Word of God. It's alive and it's, it's so rich with its stories and its illustrations and, and the things that people have jeopard their life for, for God. And, you know, the thing is, is that are we willing to do whatever it takes to take the gospel or to tell someone about Jesus Christ? Or are we uh, so disconnected from God? Have we forgot about God so much? That we are afraid or that we don't know how to tell someone about Jesus. That's the biggest thing. Do we not know how to tell people about Jesus anymore? Wow. Are we so caught up in ourselves that we don't know how to explain to someone how to get saved? We can't save them, but we can lead them, lead them to the cross at Calvary. Good. And those are one of the things that we need to know as a young Christian. It ain't just the preachers, and it ain't just the teachers, and it ain't just the people that's been in it for years and years. It's the young Christians that can win over other people. Amen. People you go to school with, people that you work with, people that you meet down at Walmart, people you meet at the gas station, people you meet on the street. You can tell them about Jesus and how He loved them and how He gave His love for ransom for their sins. Amen. Amen. His works are wonderful and He is to That's be good. praised. The thing is, it says here, Brother Tim said, but keep His commandments. And what are His commandments? Do you realize, brother, that there, sister, that there's over 700 laws besides the Ten Commandments? Right. There's no way I can keep all of that. But if I love God with all my heart and if I do unto others as I would have others do unto me, you guess what? I fulfill all the laws and commandments. Amen. That's wonderful, isn't it? That's the love and the power of the cross. Amen. We can fulfill everything that the prophets had prophesied of Christ. If we do those things, keep God at the forefront, forefront of, of, of your, or the forefront of your thoughts, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. That way you're not doing them wrong. You're not trying to rob them. You're not trying to do anything other than what we need to do as Christians. And that's to be a witness. And that's to tell them, hey, you know what? Things are bad in your life. I realize it. But you know what? God's bigger than your problems. There you go. God's bigger than your problems. Let's not forget His works, what He's done in our life. He did a great work in our life, didn't He? He took David little shepherd boy and did a great work in his life. I look at stories like that, Brother Tim. That was amazing, wasn't it? Sure was. That all those big boys out there and Saul was leading that army and that Philistine stood up there, Goliath. And those was, those was probably some big boys. You know, as a matter of fact, if you start reading in Chronicles and you start reading in the Old Testament, some of those boys had, had killed 300 at one time. Those were some pretty bad men. But they were afraid that day for a reason. And I think what it was is that God would get the glory through David. Sometimes we are, we are hardened Christians. We've been in it for years and years and years. And God uh -huh. won't use us for a reason. He wants to use someone that's young. He wants to use someone that's just been saved. You know, because He wants to get the glory. Sometimes, I've been in it 20 some years. Sometimes if I do something, maybe I'll think, look at what I did. And that, that'll give God the glory. Amen. There you go. God will use somebody that's just a ruddy youth, just like David, so he can get the glory. Amen. There's many wonderful things that God's done in my life. And I know he's done in your life as well. Let's turn over to Psalms 106 and 13. Psalms 106 and 13. Psalms 106 and 13. And just say amen when you get there. Amen. The Bible says they soon forget what? His works. His works. They waited not for his counsel. You know what? 
we act foolish. I don't say we act like fools. And I don't say we are fools because if you have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're not a fool. Amen. But the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Sometimes we act foolish because we don't wait upon his counsel. Sometimes we think that we have more knowledge than the Bible. We have more knowledge than Jesus Christ. We have more knowledge than God can give us through his word. And we don't wait upon his counsel. And we go out there and we fail miserably. And then we wonder and we try to blame God. God, you said, you said you would be with me. But we didn't wait upon his counsel. You know, we, we got to sometimes have patience. Wait. What did he tell Moses at the Red Sea? Wait. Wait, don't go trudging out there. Don't go dog paddling. Wait. You see, and Moses waited, and great salvation was for the children of Israel. You see, even though Moses didn't go into the promised land, Joshua led him. Moses did some great things for God too. But he had patience. And many times... You know, and, and we need to be like Moses. We need to pray for people because you know what? Sometimes, sometimes I know we probably say, you know what, God, go ahead and strike them dead and send them straight to hell. You know, sometimes we have that mentality. If you don't, okay, I'll admit, sometimes I get angry at people. And thank God I'm not God or I'd put them all in hell. I'd kill them and let God sort them out. But you know what? I'm not God. Thank God. God is a loving God. God is a God of patience. But we need to be like Moses. We need to pray for people in their situations. Has, some, has someone done you wrong? Has someone done something against you that really has made you angry? You know what? Pray for them. Love them. That's what the Bible says. We're not to try to get back at them. We're not to try to get even with them. You know, um, we're to let God take care of the situation. Hey, you know what? They need Jesus just like you need Jesus. They need to be saved just like we were saved. Amen. And, and the thing about his counsel is that he's got the best counsel there he ever was. Amen. We can read books and, and we can read uh, encyclopedias and, and dictionaries and everything. We can try to get counsel from what men's perspective is on life. But there's nothing that will ever take the place of this Bible. Nothing will ever take the place of God's Word Amen. as far as Amen. counsel in our lives. That's why I read it every day. Because you know what? I, I think... I'm going to start the day out like this. I've got an itinerary. And I look at that itinerary and I've broken down my day into certain hours that I'm going to get this accomplished and that accomplished and everything. And then all of a sudden, uh, God says, I want you to do this. And then, you know, I can say, you know, God, that's not on the itinerary. I can't do that. You know, I want to lose time here. I'm going to lose time there. But God says, I want you to do it this way. So we've got to be in tune with God. We've got to know what God says. He's going to counsel us. Therefore, your business is better. Your personal life is better. Your ministry is better. Everything just is much better when you listen that's to it. the counsel of God. And that's what people, when they forget God, they forget about that covenant and they forget about His wonderful works. They don't seek His counsel no more. They think they know better than the preacher. The preacher said this, the preacher is, when the preacher gets up, our pastor, when he breaks the bread of life and he's preaching out of this gospel, it's not his personal perspective. It's the counsel of God. And when we turn our back on that counsel, we're turning our back on God. You know, the preacher ain't got no right to tell me how to live. The preacher ain't got no right to preach that to me. You know, but it ain't that the preacher's trying to hurt you or harm you. It's that the preacher's trying to help you through God's Word. And that's sound counsel. Amen. And that's what I'm trying to do tonight. I'm trying to preach sound counsel. That you can that you can take this and you can lay it up on the tables of your heart and, and you know and we're not promised tomorrow, but if tomorrow comes and we get up, you know, we can reflect back on God's word and we can say, you know what, I remember what was preached last night. And it goes probably along with what you're going to read tomorrow if you read your Bible. And my advice is read your Bible. Read your Bible. No matter what happens, read your Bible. Hey, you ain't got time, uh, you know, drink a cup of coffee and read a little bit. Whatever you've got time for, if you read uh, three or four verses, you've read some of God's word. And it don't take long to read three or four verses, does it? That's right. Now, I'm not asking you to read 25 chapters, but if you can read a few chapters, it would be pretty good. Because right? you can get a bigger you can get a bigger scope on things and what God wants in your life. Amen. So not only when people forget God, do they forget His covenant and His works, but they also forget His Word. They forget His Word. Who's ever heard of Bible drills? Sister Bonnie was telling me about Jalen and her Bible drills and how that they learn 
scripture so that they can go right to that scripture in, in the Bible and they can quote that scripture. And Helen works with the children in that. And we encourage Sunday school uh, in our Sunday school class to, to you know try to memorize some of these. And we do that by taking notes. <coughs> underline. Don't be afraid to underline. Hey, don't write in God's Bible. Don't write in God's Word. There's nothing wrong with underlining things. I highlight and I underline things. I follow if Brother Tim Bristol's preaching. I'll write down the date and the day and everything that he preached this certain message. That message just ain't for the half hour or the hour we're at church. That message is going to help me later on because I know that he's, he's close to God. Go. And when I used to sit under Tim uh, Smith's tutelage in Sunday school, I grow tremendously, Brother Tim, because I would take notes. I just was always, as a young Christian, I learned to take notes. And it really helped me learn more about God's Word, learn what He says, learn what He's trying to tell me. And I would most definitely encourage you to learn God's Word. Let's look in Hebrews 12 and 5. Hebrews 12 and 5. People forget about the Word of God. Hebrews 12 and 5. When you get there, please say amen. Amen. Hebrews 12 and 5. We're going to talk about the Word of God. Amen. And ye have forgotten what, church? Excellent. The exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of Him. Hey. How does He chasten us? How does He rebuke us? Through His Word. Amen. His Word will stand when time is no more. Amen. His word will stand no matter what you face in your life. Amen. His word will stand. And it will always be, thank God, for God's word. Amen. And you have forgotten the exhortation. You know what? People that forget God, they forget about the exhortation of His word. I'm trying to warn you. I'm trying to warn you. I'm trying to warn you. Repent. Turn away from your sin. And that's what God's word tells us. It ain't just some fairy tale. It ain't just Lottie dies. Just a, I've been saved and everything's going to be a bed of roses and the bluebirds are going to sing every day and the sun's going to shine. And It's not like that. We're going to run into trials and tribulations and troubles and they're going to arise in our life and the Word of God is going to be there and it's going to tell you, hey, you know what? God's going to see you through this. Amen. The Word of God, let it be hid upon the tables of your heart and be brought back to remembrance no matter what the situation is. You see, God's Word tells us how we should treat our children and how we should treat our spouses and how we should treat our brothers and sisters in Christ. I've never seen in God's Word where I had the license to come in here and beat you over the head with the Bible. I've never seen in God's Word where I had the right to stand behind this pulpit and, and, and just come against somebody to the point where they want to leave. There you go. I've never believed in beating the flock. I think that God's Word should take care of situations Amen. in people's lives. We've not got the right, Brother Tim Bristol, to do anything other than preach God's Amen. Word. Amen. It says, which speaketh unto you as unto children. Now, when it talks about children in the Bible, who's it talking about? It's talking about the, those that are redeemed. Amen. It didn't say bastards. Because... That type of person knows not God. They need to know God. Yeah. He doesn't chasten bastards. And I'm not cussing. That's the word that's in the Bible. He doesn't chasten the lost or the sinners. Why? Because they're not his children. Right. Tim, when you get down to Walmart and Melinda's out of control, you you know, you can whoop her. But are you gonna fly over and whoop fifteen other youngins? You know, you're not you're not allowed. Those aren't your children. You don't. Know, you'd like to, right? Like to get a hickory and whoop them all. But you know, it's it's the fact that we're his children and right. chastens us. I thank God for chastening because Brother Tim Smith, that shows me I'm his child. Hey, Amen. If, if I did wrong and he didn't chast me, Uncle Doug, I'd have to you know, come to the altar and make sure I was saved. Come on. That's the thing. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Don't despise his chastening. Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Have you ever been rebuked? Amen. Thank God for somebody that's got a backbone to rebuke you when you're wrong. Amen. 
I'm not talking about judging. And I'm not talking about beating somebody over the head and chasing somebody off from church. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about as brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to learn how to rebuke Amen. sin. How to rebuke people. And some people, when you try to tell them something that the Bible says, they get mad. Their feelings get hurt. And they start crying. And they start saying, you're picking on me. Bless <laughs> I'm never going to fight. But you know what? The thing is, is we need more people with backbones. We need more people to be able to stand up and say, you know what? It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. God says it's wrong. And it is wrong. And not be afraid to say, God, examine my heart. If I'm doing wrong. You see, just because we're teaching it and preaching it doesn't mean that we're without blame. Amen. Doesn't mean that we're, you know, without judgment from God. We are. We're judged more of God. Brother Tim Bristol, Brother Tim Smith, uh, the pastor, all of us, we're, we're more under God's scrutiny than anyone else because He's given us the ability to preach this Word or to Amen. teach this Word. And guess what? If we make a mistake, if we don't preach what's right or teach what's right, then we stand before God. We are accountable for what we're preaching and teaching to you at this church. That's why... I always want to get up and just tell you how I love you. You mean everything to me because you mean everything to God. You are my friend. You are my brother. You are my sister. And I, and I love you and I appreciate you. And thank you so much for everything, all the prayers you've ever prayed for me. You know, because sometimes I get in those valleys, Brother Tim Bristol. I get down there and those tears start falling. And I say, you know, I've messed up again and I've done this and I've done that. And then all of a sudden I get a phone call and someone says, I'm praying for you. Amen. Has that ever happened to you? Too I'm bad. praying for you. I don't know why God just laid you on my heart and I wanted to call you and just tell you that I'm praying for you. You know, and that means a whole lot. And we should exercise that as well as Christians. We should just call. If somebody comes to your mind, if God puts somebody on your heart, it wouldn't be a bad idea to dial them up and say, you know, I don't know why God put you on my heart, but I'm praying for you. You see, that means everything. Amen. Somebody is in despair. Someone's about to give up. Someone's uh, just about to get out of church in that one little phone call, that one little, I love you, I appreciate you, I'm praying for you. That will bring them right back. Amen. You see, the Word of God, let's not forget the Word of God and what it's done in our lives and how it's helped us numerous, numerous times. You know, we preached on forgetting God, and there's a lot of people that have forgot God. Since we've been here seven years, uh, like the pastor said, if everybody would have stayed that we knew in those last seven years only, this place would be packed out tonight. It would, wouldn't it, sister? Lucy, I know you guys have been here longer, and you have known a lot of people that's come. And you know, Uncle Doug, you've probably known a lot of people, but people are forgetting about God. Now, sometimes it's the weather that makes people forget about God. You know, sometimes the weather's too pretty, I can't go to church. And sometimes the weather's too bad, I can't go to church. So you can't win for losing, you know, it's either too cold or too hot. So the weather keeps people out of church. Sometimes it's uh, what they want to do. Sometimes it's hobbies. Sometimes it's, uh, like I said, relationships. Sometimes it's something, you know, small and minute. But you know what? Anything that takes you away from God in His sheltering arms, in His Word, in His covenant, in His love, you know what? It's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. You know, Amen. and my prayer is that, you know, if you know somebody that's... Uh, if you know somebody that used to come here and, and you want to just call them up and you want to give them a word of encouragement instead of saying, you know, you old rascal, you need to get back in church, you old sinner. Uh, you know, if you just call them up and say, hey, we miss you. I love you. I'd really like to see you back in church. Uh, that would really make the world a difference. You know, they're forgetting about God, but that doesn't mean that we have to forget about God. Listen, we come to church about three times a week. When we go out them doors, that doesn't mean that we need to forget about God. Amen. Right. You you know, we need to keep Him at the the forefront of our thoughts all the time. Just because we're not in church doesn't mean that we have to forget. You see, like I said, it's a daily reading. It's praying. It's seeking God. You know what? You might say, I don't want to be a holy roller. I don't you know that thing, nah, that's that's just too much. Too much God. Too much God. You can never have enough God. Amen. If you have too much God, call me and give me some of it. Please. I need more. Every day. You know, Tim, if I slip mentally, I might make a mistake. So I got I got to keep thinking about you know the 
thing is, what would Jesus do? But people don't really want to act on that, do they? Right. What would Jesus do? Well, Jesus attended church every time the doors open. But they don't want to. So, no use in wearing what would Jesus do t-shirts or bands. Jesus read the scriptures. He, he got up in church and quoted the scripture, didn't he? Amen. Mm -hmm. so Jesus read the Bible. Jesus attended church. So that right there is a great, great illustration for us as to how we should conduct ourselves as Christians. Listen, I appreciate each and every one of you tonight. And thank you for coming. Um, you know, this church can grow. This church can go forward if we only want it to. If we decide to sit back and say, you know what, you know, puff up on God. And if we decide to just say, you know what, it's just not worth it. Uh, I'm not going to tell anybody about the Lord. I'm not going to read my Bible. I'm not going to pray. Then the church becomes what church? Stagnant. We'll never get nobody to come. We'll never see somebody walk the uh, aisles for the Lord and get saved. You know, we might not ever see it. But I'm saying, and, and there's very few people that has ever come and got saved as far as you know, me coming to this church seven years, I've seen just very few people get saved. But it's not about numbers. Right. It's about what we are as, as the church. Who are we as the church? We better be prepared because you know what? In the next little bit, God could be sending some people our way. Hey, and they're going to look. Believe me, when I was lost, Brother Tim, and I went and I sit in the back of the church, I looked. I, I was lost. I didn't realize it. The Holy Ghost wasn't pulling at me. But just as a carnal man, I would look at the service, and I would look and see how people reacted. If there was people over there popping bubble gum, or there was people filling with their watch, or there was people doing this and that, you know, as a carnal man, as a lost man, I was smart enough to realize these people really don't want to be here. These people ain't really in tune with what the preacher's preaching up there. And, you know, and that was kind of a deterrent to me. But I remember that night that God got a hold of me, that wasn't a deterrent no more. The thing is, is I knew I was going to go to hell when that preacher preached that you're going to go to hell if you don't get saved. Then that got me to thinking, you better get up there. You better give your heart to the Lord. You better turn this thing around. You're not promised another day. Amen. Amen. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for coming. Let's come up and let's dismiss it.